Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. We're just guys who love our <laughs> wives, crazy about our kids. We want to do well in business, but we're not going to sacrifice our loved ones on the altar of our own self-ambitions. Yeah, and we need to make some money so that we can do some pretty cool things with our family. we got to fund this adventure. I mean, sometimes money is important. Alrighty then, what are we talking about? That was my weak, weak accent from my Canadian friend, Steve Waddell, right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. Chris, you going to host us today or what? Man, life's too short to host. Hey, that's a good topic. Life's too short. Do extraordinary things. Let's talk about that. Let's back into this idea of... We really have a one life to live here, and yet we fall into the comfort zone too often. I'm very uncomfortable with being comfortable. That's how I like it. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's so many things that we do that are just can be mundane. We can go through the motions, choose the ordinary, secure way of life. That's kind of boring. Let's break yeah. through that. Yeah, there's another path, right? Doesn't Robert Frost talk about that? <laughs> choose the way less traveled. I mean, some people like that, right? I mean, some people choose it. It's hard for me to believe that people like it. All I know is I don't like it. I want adventure. I want life. I want new experiences. I want to go new places and meet new people and dive into everything that life has to offer. I want more. I'm drinking your Kool-Aid. Don't you feel like sometimes, too, that we kind of get fed this idea, just put your head down, follow these steps. Stay within the lines, and in 40 years, if you do it right, you can then have those adventures. You can then live those dreams. Except your metal hip is one of those barometer things. Whenever it gets a little cloudy, you start feeling pain. (laughs) In 40 years from now, Chris, you're going to be in your late 70s. You want to wait that long? Heck no. I want to do it now before I get my metal hip replacement. (laughs) (laughs) Today, let's just dive in and talk about this and what it looks like for our own lives, our own experiences of just doing extraordinary things, painting outside the lines, getting outside of the box to have new experiences, new adventures for ourselves, for our family. And let's be honest, there's people that are going to look at us like we've got a third eye or something crazy. So, I mean, what are some extraordinary things that you're wanting to do that, that if someone was looking outside saying, wow, that's different. Why do you do that? Jamie, you travel more than, you know, most in the AARP. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> give us an idea of what your family's lifestyle is like. Oh, man, it just keeps changing. I took Diego to Cuba this year, and then I did Cecilia with Ruthie. We're traveling as a family all together pretty regularly, and then we're, doing, we're kind of splitting up and doing some other things. As we record this today... I'm home with the four kids and Ruthie's in Indiana at a coaching conference. It's been a little bit stressful, I'm not going to lie, but we're just saying yes to things because it's coming out of our heart, just like like you guys. I love hanging out with you guys because these ideas come up almost daily. And you know how in a lot of groups you'll throw an idea out there and they'll be like, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. And then they go back to talking about sports or something else. (laughs) In this group of guys, you guys say, yeah, let's do it. (laughs) And then you start planning it. If it's a good idea, it just kind of evolves and all of a sudden it's happening. Do you remember, Michael, when uh, it it was maybe not even a month before Jamie and Diego went to Cuba that we were talking here whether it was on a podcast recording or prior to one, Jamie was just kind of disclosing some stuff about uh, wanting to lean into that relationship. And we just said, hey, Jamie, we challenge you, man. Go do something with Diego. <laughs> and like with a, within a month later, he's like sending us pictures of him and Diego like cruising around in these awesome cars and having experiences. <laughs> exactly because of what you said, he decided, let's just do it. And I think one of the questions I love about you two is that you say, why not? Instead of why? When some crazy idea comes up, you're like, why not do that? And let's do it now, soon. That's not what I usually think. I mean, it sounds negative, like I'm going to have a negative mindset, but 
I think it's changed for me. Like I asked that question because I'm associated with you guys and you kind of encouraged me to do these things. The trip for Cuba, like that happened because I went to Diego and said, what do you want to do? I hate to admit it, but I'm not always saying why not. But whenever I have a conversation with you guys, it's, I'm exercising that muscle of actually leaning into these things that could be. I'm not making sense here, but. <laughs> <laughs> making sense to me. I mean, what we're talking about is pretty weird. It is just a weird thing to say and to say out loud sometimes, but I, I, I love when an idea comes up and it just evolves and how epic it is. First, it's just this idea of like, yeah, we should go here. And then maybe the next idea is, yeah, and we should bring our kids or yeah, maybe we can take a sailboat there or maybe we can stay a month there with our whole family. So these ideas just start flowing and it's not lip service, right? We're actually serious about this stuff. And if we can make it happen, we go ahead and make it happen. And that's, that's what's just so fun about dreaming with you guys and coming up with ideas about what we want to do. Michael, I, I see you and, and your life right now and you, the adventures that you and Lydia have, have painted for your family here in the, in the not so distant future. And I just think of like the, there's comfort zones that we live in. There's kind of the ordinary lifestyle that most of us would fall into and you guys have a great life and a great family and great friends around there but yet you're pursuing something different your next few months are going to be a little wild but you're you're running to something fun that you guys have chosen so dude talk about that a little bit what's that been like for you growing up in a town where you probably know most of the people you've got tons of experience but yet you're you're choosing something different Oh man, I I absolutely adore my family. They have raised me well and helped me become the person I am today. But yeah, they do tend to want to be around each other and not shake things up a whole lot. And I am just not wired that way. Like I want to go out and see the world. I want to experience different places. But there's a real tension there. Right now, I have three kids and all my siblings have two or more kids. They live very close to each other right now. And I'm having to choose between spending time with them regularly and living with them and doing life together or venturing out, which I feel like is authentic to me. Now, this is not an easy situation to be in. I'm already like dreading having to take this step forward. But I know that if I don't, that a piece of me will be lost. In fact, like our relationships are going to be better if I do this because I'm going to have more to give, more perspective, more experience to bring back to them. So I'm, believe me, this isn't easy for me, but I'm embracing it. And if I'm authentic, I have to, I have to do it. I love that, man. I love that that is something you've identified in yourself that you have this spirit of adventure, the spirit of like doing things differently. And if you, if you didn't make this choice, like you said, I mean, something would kind of die inside of you or it would just, you'd have this tension for too long. So you're taking this bold step. So yeah, yeah we walk through that with you, man. <laughs> it's a reoccurring theme on the podcast that we talk about. Our kids are watching and we've talked about more is caught than taught. I'm thinking of our kids as adults leaving and cleaving with their mates and really trying to go after what their unique adventure would look like. Oh, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit a big painful. Side, buddy. Oh, the big, I feel like this loss, like in my 20s, so much of what I did, I was afraid of what other people thought of me and to fit in. And I just think, how much pain could we alleviate from our kids by drilling that into them, that God has a unique plan for you and your partner that you're going to marry. And you guys got to go boldly. I, I love how McCluskey says, walk with the light you're given. It seems like we can just like not have that philosophy at all. Like the light that's been given is just sort of, I was born here. These are the people that got to sort of put in my way. Like to be a frontier person and go after a very unique vision, it's risky. And I want to teach my kids that that's the only way to do it. Hey, Amen to that, Jamie. I'm a hundred percent on board with how you're approaching that. Speaking of adventure, I mean, Chris Nehemiah, what the heck? What happened to you in the last what forty eight hours? Tell us about like 
where you were going, why you were originally going there, and what happened after you got back. Dude, yeah, this is fresh right here. So, <laughs> you know, earlier this year, Alicia and I were just kind of feeling these stirrings. Like, we've been here in Oregon nine years. It's been a great time. We've, you know, enjoyed raising a family here, starting a family. But, Michael, kind of like you, I mean, we both had felt the stirring like this this isn't totally our place and we're not totally mountain people. And there's just some things around the area that we just aren't, it's just not part of who we are. And so we decided to make a massive change and adventurous move and, and locating a place in St. Petersburg, Florida. And so just this past week and just got back yesterday morning, Alicia and I were out there for the weekend uh, celebrating our, our anniversary and looked pound the pavement flip flops on the sand of a bunch of real estate and aiming to find a rental and just didn't find anything ended up two mornings ago, like hours before going to the airport, we, we found this house that we really liked. And man, by yesterday evening, we had uh, our offer put in accepted within a few hours and now we're in escrow and it's just like, it's wow. kind of crazy, man. But dude, going back to what both of you said, you know, Jamie, this is, an opportunity where we're, we know our kids are watching. They're excited about this too. They're also, you know, going to miss some of their friends. But one of the things we talk about in our family is make new friends, but keep the old, but constantly make new friends. So for them, they're kind of excited to explore a new area and meet some new people. And I hope that's something that will kind of model for them and and put into them that, Hey, there's going to be good people no matter where you go. Like we talk about being an usher for people, not a bouncer like Bob Goff talks about, right? (laughs) But just really like taking every opportunity, every chapter of life, every stage to wherever you live, say, all right, how are we going to make this this fun and and adventurous? And so, dude, it's been wild, but uh, we're we're walking in this step by step. That was incredible. You got to hang out with Greg Tosi there a little bit too. Yeah, man. Greg's in the FM crew. It's fun. I love me some Tosies. Great people. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah, he Greg keeps um sending me text messages of like houses in St. Petersburg area. You gotta drop a zero or a comma on some of those houses you're sending us though. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, I love that story, Chris. You went down to find a rental. <laughs> Sorry, honey, for your anniversary, I was gonna get you a rental house in Florida. Instead, I bought you a house. Now your whole family is going to be heading down that way. I mean, how many family members and roots do you have established down there in St. Petersburg? Not a whole lot, man. And that's the thing. Like, people even here, it's like, wait, so you don't have family there? You don't really know people that well there? And I think if you're in this mindset where you're kind of a citizen of the zip code or the county or the state that you grew up in, you are always kind of stuck there. We don't buy that, man. It's like, go be adventurous. Go find uh, locations that you want to explore and dream. And man, we, we have also talked about the fact that if we just fail and fall flat on our face here in a year or two, like we can always come back. We can always choose a new adventure. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But I think uh, so many people don't see life that way. Yeah, I want to hang out with weird guys like you, Chris. People that see things differently. I receive that. <laughs> we're all well, weird. I love the topic, like the what we're going to call this show. Life is short. Do extraordinary things. That should be like on one of those barnwood doors. I want that every single day just to remind myself. Life is short. Like we're going to... Like I'm 41 years old. Do you guys ever feel like you just woke up like an adult with like real life just happening? Like John Eldridge gives that example of... Sometimes life feels like you arrive at an action movie five minutes late. Something's going on here. And we lie to ourselves and think, oh, I got time to do things. Like We don't know how, how long we have. Jim Rohn tells a story in this program that is called The Day Your Life Turns Around. And he talks about his friend that was 45 years old that died. At his funeral, everybody was saying it was so sad that he died. And Jim Rohn's take on it was this guy who was 45 years old He lived five lifetimes by the experiences that he did. When I think of somebody like you guys, McCluskey, Bob Goff, Dan Miller, like these people that I look up to, Vinny Poglesi, they're living these extraordinary lives, just like saying yes to the the abnormal. And like, who wants to be normal anyway? Like, 
I, I don't. I want to be that guy who, if I died, like, could somebody come to our funeral and say, oh my gosh, that guy, he was an example to other people of saying yes to the extraordinary. Like that's, I long to be that guy. And I think you guys are that guy. <laughs> hey, I'm my own guy. <laughs> no, I'm well, a version you. of that guy that, that if Michael McGravy died at 45, oh man, like we miss him. But like he lived three lifetimes because he lived like a life of adventure, like very unique. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And, you know, just a few days ago, I had lunch with three friends from back in high school. And, you know, by the world's standards, they're very successful guys, great careers in banking and accounting and, you know, the country club membership, great families, that sort of thing. But I noticed something. At a certain point, the conversation kind of died off and had to change direction. So they can talk about sports. They can talk about their kids and how's everybody doing. But what they didn't talk about is what they truly care about, what they truly long for, the, what they want, the lives that would inspire them and how mm. they're going after that. Because I feel like they can't. Like they're almost in a, in a way stuck where they are because if they were going to pursue those things that they really love, they would have to unplug, unplug major areas of their lives. I am grateful every day that my life is far from perfect and it's difficult and challenging, but the door is open to adventure and I want to keep that door wide open and I'm always going to choose to go after what really makes me come alive and what's, what makes my family come alive. Yes. And I'm going to take, I'm going to jump in here and be the host for a second, even though we know Nimoy is our host. But our second point is to give yourself permission to do these things, even if the others around you aren't. And for me, like, I have to be honest, that was like a really challenging thing to do. Like I'm looking around when I, I started doing some of this travel with my family and it felt amazing to do it. And I was almost sabotaging myself from owning it, that somehow I had built in the flexibility in my life that I could I could go to these places with my family and I wasn't putting them in financial risk. It felt weird. And so like being a part of that 48 days mastermind group with you guys with the the Cuba trip was a really good example where you guys saw this gap in my life where I was trying to have more connection with Diego and you guys gave me permission to just go and do something with him, spend a couple of days. And I hate to say it, but like that wouldn't be come natural if I was just by myself with my own thought. That's why I pushed back a little bit, Chris, when you were saying, Jamie, you always say like, why not? I do that because I'm around you guys and I'm in community of people that are saying that. Giving yourself permission to do these things is actually more difficult than it. It's not just making a decision and saying, I'm going to live this life. It is like a process to jump that hurdle. And you guys always laugh at me when I say coronate, but I'm going to use it again. Is you have to coronate yourself as somebody who has Eight the permission to do where it. the word coronation has been used. Eight. Yeah. I keep <laughs> thinking of Michael's wedding or the, the, the Coptic wedding where like, today, marriage is what brings us together from Princess <laughs> okay. But hey, how, many ta- how many crowns can we have? I mean, I need like a whole bedroom just for my crowns. I've been coronated so yeah. many times by James. <laughs> <laughs> but... I want to give a shout out to one of the guys who's one of our best friends. He's actually going to be going on that one epic trip with us. But Roger Whitney, he just he was sharing about how next year he's going to be spending a month in this little town that he's wanted to hang out in. And he's just giving himself permission to actually the way he explained to me is like, I'm going to live there for a month. He's just going to go and do life there. Like it's not a vacation. It's and we were talking about just this thing about giving yourself permission and it's like an upper limit that maybe we don't feel like we deserve to do that. And it takes, it takes some convincing to ourselves to actually lean in. Yeah. He's the guy that also just recently went to Mongolia, right? <laughs> and one more fun fact, his great, great grandfather invented the cotton gin. Are you serious? Uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> Eli Whitney. I, we do have Weird Al Yankovic is related to McCluskey. So we have like all these connections with like these famous people. Practically celebrities. Jamie, you, you know, you, you took the point there, but it's such a good one that, that I want to bring what you guys both just said there. In terms of giving yourself permission to do these kind of extraordinary things, because we're in community and talking constantly, like we do help spur each other on. We do get past the question of why to just skip that and go, well, why not? Why not do this? Yeah, Michael, it's like some of those guys sitting around your lunch the other day 
they haven't given them, themselves permission yet. They're a successful banker. What would it take for someone like that to just say, you know what, maybe I'm just going to try this and go approach my boss and say, hey, can I take a month off and go do something epic with my family? Maybe he's going to taste something he's never tasted before and that's going to expose this whole new heart of venture and he's going to make some exceptional choices you know, with that. But I think a lot of guys have to make that choice of just saying, maybe I do deserve a little bit more than this ordinary life that I'm living right now. Take that risk. Take that step. So Chris, we've talked about this idea that life is short and, and to do extraordinary things, to live out of that heart of adventure that God has called us to. And we just want to get your take on this and this, this McCluskey moment, if you will. What are your thoughts when you talk about this idea of guys living out their potential and, and living out of this, getting out of this comfortable, ordinary lifestyle that we're so accustomed to? Well, you know what my thoughts are on this. <laughs> you used a word a moment ago that we might as well drag back in here, and that was the word crazy. You were saying, <laughs> you know, hey, you don't have to do something crazy. But the truth is, any number of things that we might choose to do when we're really embracing our passions and living according to our highest values, other people may at least look at and say, dude, are you crazy? And our answer needs to be something along the lines of, I'm crazy if I don't. Because if I don't listen to the desires of my heart, my passions, my core values, and take the risks and do the planning and, 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 and all in order to live according to those, then I'm choosing something far less than what I know could be. I don't know the outcome of the activity. I know what it is to be alive when I'm engaged in those activities. And I know that the consequence of not being engaged in those kinds of things that I value most is crazy. Because I'm like, the walking dead at that point. I'm not really living. For me, some of the toughest challenges that we faced in, in the life that we've chosen, Rachel and I were coming up on our 32nd anniversary here soon. As we look back over these years, some of the toughest times we've ever had together were times that were of our own choosing. And we were in the midst of stuff that other people were saying crazy. And we were looking at it and going, but at least I know I'm alive. I don't think it's any mistake that some of the most popular things on television and in the movie theaters anymore are things about zombies, vampires, you know, the, un the undead or what do they call like, like they're not really alive. They're not really dead. You've got a body, but no soul. And it just seeks to feed off of others. That's a statement about our culture. People are identifying with something that I don't want to identify with. I mean, I'm not judging for somebody for watching those shows. I'm just saying it's a reflection of a state of our culture. When I am engaged in things that I really care about, and I'm facing the, the scariness, the craziness, but I know I'm alive, then I'm really, yeah, then I'm really fully living what I believe God actually called me to. So, hey, I could go on all day, but there it is in a, in, a, in a few brief statements. That's what I think about what we've been talking about today. I love it. That's love so it. good, McCluskey. I'm, I'm thinking about Donald Miller and that, what's the name of that one story? Um, what's the title? A million of that miles in a thousand years. Yeah. He, he makes the point in that, in that book that the same elements that make a good story are what make a good life. If a character in a story just like saved a bunch of money to buy a Volvo, no one would want to go to that movie. But <laughs> but the guy who buys a horse living in a trailer, like that has so much more adventure. Or if I look at you guys on the screen here and like you guys are living a good story because you're sort of going in the frontier and taking the road less traveled. So it reminds me of what Jim Rohn said. I'm just paraphrasing and I always go back to this when I start to feel afraid. The same walls that protect you from fear are the walls that keep out joy and satisfaction. And I'll throw an adventure there too, <laughs> right? We miss something if we don't step into some of the fear associated with living a big life, an adventurous life, an inspired life. That's good. I, Chris, I'm curious with you and Rachel, when you made that massive move from Florida to the mountains, what was some of that discussion you had 
in your mind of giving yourself permission to do something that was extraordinary. I mean, Crazy. it was something where people, <laughs> the Indians were jumping were not, out of the Ozark mountains. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally what you guys have been talking about. It's just the awareness. You know, this is not a dress rehearsal. We only go through life one time. And when I get to the end of it, I want to know that I lived it. I don't want to think that I was just kind of testing the waters or practicing things or experimenting or something. I, I, I want to be all in. Some of the worst times, even in, in the worst of my Lyme disease, I can remember when I, when I had shingles on my face. Oh, that was nice. You know, my head split open. My, my eye, I looked like something out of a, of a freak show or a Frankenstein kind of a monster or something. We kept me away from the kids for a good solid week because I, I was just Oh my gosh, open weeping sores on my face. I was horrendous and I was in excruciating pain. And through the pain, I would say to Rachel, at least I know I'm alive. And I don't mean alive like gasping for air, although there were times where I felt like I was. I mean like I'm alive. I made the choices that I made and come what may, I'm fully engaged. Mm -hmm. I see an awfully lot of, we're talking to men here, so we'll say men, but, but people in general, I see an awful lot of men who are so disengaged from the things that really matter most, and not even just in my life, like I'm judging them, in their own lives. Mm -hmm. They're so disengaged from them that they're just walking around anything but fully alive. And uh, to me, that's far worse than any other kind of scary risks that I might be facing in, uh, in doing, quote, crazy stuff. Man, to, to sum up what you guys have been talking about, because this has been such a great conversation, an important topic, especially for guys that just want to live as, Chris, like you said, don't be a walking dead. Like, it, mm -hmm. if, even if you take out, go on adventure, you might have a little bit of pain, but at least you know you're living. And boy, I just think of that, that line from one of my favorite bands, Switchfoot, is that I want to thrive, not just survive. So gentlemen, what can we do this week to thrive? What do we need to lean into? What questions do we need to ask ourselves to get outside our comfort, get outside those walls like Michael talked about? Yeah. It's kind and of scary. It's it I feel bad, but most of the time people get to that point when everything comes crashing down, they lose a job or they have a breakdown or something crazy happens and, and then they have this enlightening moment. But we can choose this. I think about that guy. Who's the rollerblader from California? Oh, yeah, slow-mo. The dude was like a, a neurosurgeon or something and just decided it was too stressful and he wanted to roller skate by the coast. He's like one of the happiest dudes in the world, but he made this change in his life and now he's like fully alive, rollerblading like a guy looking like he's in slow motion. <laughs> so. now, that's an extreme example, but we, we all respect people like that because they decided I'm going to go after something that I truly value. That's a, good, that's a good point. That's a good question to ask ourselves. Like what do we truly value? You know, there's so many guys I think that do well, that get, locked into either a great job or creating a great income for themselves, but they have almost zero freedom and flexibility in their life. So boy, what, what kind of questions could we ask ourselves more often? What kind of questions could we ask our friends more often to, to challenge yeah. that, that mindset a bit more? Yeah. What would an authentic life look like if there were no boundaries? Mm -hmm. Man, this, okay. I got to bring this up. <laughs> a little controversial, but you know, isn't it often don't we use God sometimes as a crutch in this area? Like, yeah, I'm just looking for God's plan for my life, and I don't feel like He's leading me in this crazy adventure. He wants me to be more responsible. I don't know about that thinking. Like, I, I'm starting to learn a little bit more about freedom and life, and I think like God gives us a ton of space in that area. He wants us mm -hmm. to explore and he wants us to have desires and to go after things. And I don't know, sometimes that, be, I think that's a, a cop out. Is that too harsh to say? No, I'm thinking of, I was reading my um, Giovanni and Amelia, the Chronicles of Narnia the other day. And I think it was Peter or Susan, I forgot, but he's like, what's, what's Aslan like? Is he, is he safe? 
And the answer, it's like a famous C.S. Lewis quote, right? Like, he's not safe, but he's good. And I think, I think we had this mindset that, like, in Christianity, or we could pull the God card, that it's somehow godly to play it safe, to be secure and live a life that maybe people aren't, don't do anything extraordinary because you might take the focus off of something, who knows. But, I mean, you read the Bible and, like, <laughs> people, there's, like, it's such a book of adventure. Like God's story, if you're going to be called into it, is not a safe story. No, I totally agree. Oh. This whole thing that God is safe is Bohemian Crapsody. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make that up? Yeah, dude. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I just I like that. <laughs> Throughout, like just the Old Testament in particular, there's so many times where God calls them to go do something bizarre, adventurous, bold. And like how many times, I mean, I, in fact, I was just reading the other day in, in Bob Goff's new book, Everybody Always, where he says his favorite three words in the Bible is don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. He just says go. And like there's so many times where God calls us and we just have to say, all right, let's just do this. It doesn't totally make sense, but we're just going to go and go for it. And I think guys need to hear that more often. So let's land this plane here on life's too short doing extraordinary things. Guys, what, what would you say to someone who maybe feels like they got the golden handcuffs a little bit and, and we, and we want to challenge them. We want to encourage them along the way, usher them into this new way of doing life and living. I mean, I think we've touched on a couple, but just this idea of, of giving yourself permission to do things, even if others around you are not doing them. I mean, what would that permission look like for for you right now yeah sell your house uh quit your job and the rest will fall into place no <laughs> worries sounds easy <laughs> one of my favorite movies i love that movie the matrix where morpheus has the blue and the red pill that decision to take the road less traveled i'm thinking about me and ruthie and, and where we are today and what the lifestyle that we live we talked about it in an earlier podcast, like we said yes to doing something like 2% of our dream. So, I mean, it starts with like, do you want to continue to live the way you're living or do you, are you willing to swallow that new pill and go to like Alice in Wonderland? What is it? Alice in Wonderland or like go down that rabbit trail? Like it's scary, but like you start by making a decision and, and saying, I'm willing to maybe risk it a little bit more than, than before. Yeah. Maybe don't let it die. Like, listen to that voice. If there's something saying in you, oh, I, there's more. I want something else. Like, hear that out. You don't have to sell your house, like I said, and quit your job and do all the, something crazy. But where can you start? Like, is it one little adventure that you could plan? Is there something that you've never done before that you could take on? Like, just take a bite out of that dream and see what happens. It'll lead to some more inspiration, more ideas, and more opportunities. Yeah, and then go get the Barnwood sign that says, life is short, do extraordinary things, and then look at that every day. Just do something small. Okay, that was <laughs> pretty cheesy. You're, you're supposed to laugh at that. Like, Are we <laughs> going to put like, the Barnwood door on the EFM Life website? <laughs> All right. Oh. I love it though. One of those things. <laughs> it's that mindset like you guys both talked about, you know, ask yourself like, what is it that I'm being maybe too comfortable, too ordinary in right now? What's something else I need to do that's a bit more adventurous, a bit more extraordinary? Start there. See what happens. Thank you for listening to the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. Visit EFMLife.com to connect with us and others like you who are pursuing success in enterprise, family, and marriage.